A microhabitat is a habitat that's within another habitat. For example, in a garden it could be under a log. Or it could be under a stone. Or it could be under the fallen leaves, which is called the leaf litter. This is a microhabitat in my garden, and it's a compost bin. Let's have a look inside it. Inside you can see all the vegetable trimmings, all the things that get thrown away and they get put in the compost bin. It looks pretty disgusting. Let's have a look at the lid and see if we can find any mini bees. On here there are always lots and lots of mini bees. And if I look around about here you can see there's a worm wiggling away. And they do a really important job. They break down all that food and they'll turn it into soil. There are also other creatures on the lid. And if we have a look over here, you can see that black slimy looking thing there is a slug. There's another kind of slug over there. There's always lots of slugs and worms. Sometimes I can just see down here you see that white thing moving there, there's a little white fly moving around and there are some teeny tiny little things, like insects. And all of these tiny little creatures are really important because they break down all the dead leaves and all the old vegetable trimmings and they turn it into soil. Let's look what happens when they've done all their job. Well, you can just see there, look. Can you see that? An enormous worm. Down here is the bottom of the compost bin. So all the food that gets put in there, and it gets broken down by all those creepy crawlies and it turns into lovely soil that I can put on my garden and that will help all my plants grow. So all those little creepy crawlies that sometimes make us go, ugh, are really super helpful and every garden and every habitat needs them. There's another micro habitat. It's a log and can you see down there there's a woodlouse and I wouldn't be surprised there's a little family of them living in there. I can also see that there's a snail shell. I'm not sure if that snail is still alive down there. In this area there will be lots and lots of snails and slugs and things like that because again they break down the dead wood, the dead plants and they turn it all into soil that helps new plants grow. He looks like he's having a right good root round there doesn't he? Over here is a log that's just lying on the ground so I'm going to have a go at turning it over and I'll see if I can find anything under there. Oh, straight away. You can see wriggling around in there. Can you see that? There's a worm. There's another one over here. Quite hard to see. There it is, wiggling away. And they like it down there. Oh, I think that's another woodlouse as well. They like it down there because it's wet. It's the right conditions for them. It's moist and damp and dark and that's the kind of conditions that those mini beasts would like and as you can see there's lots of dead leaves so the earthworms will bring the dead leaves into the soil and it helps to break them down down here is what we call the leaf litter it's where all the dead leaves have fallen and if i move some of them we might be able to see some of the creatures that are under here found a slug and I found a snail and I did find lots of wood lice but they were so quick they've all squaddled away now because they like to be somewhere that's nice and dark and damp. Just like in the compost bin the slugs and snails will help to break down the dead leaves and they'll turn them into soil which will help new plants to grow. In fact I can just see something wiggling around down there. I think that might be a wood mouse, but I think it's gone to hide again. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, I can see them wriggling out. There they are. Lots of them down here. I 
I've come up to the allotment and I've got lots of things here to help me make a book hotel. They're just things that I've found around in the garden and on the allotment. I've got some stones, some broken pots, a little bit of slate, some toilet roll tubes. I've got some old egg boxes. I've got some pieces of wood that's rotting. And I've got some straw which I've already put under here. And there's a stone because I thought the wood lice might like to live under the stone. So I'm going to put the box on top and then I'm going to add some more things. Now I've added some stones at the side and it's got gaps between them because things like spiders will like to hide in there. I've got some sticks because some things like bees go inside, solitary bees, and will live in there. And I've got a toilet roll tube with some um, straw inside. So there's lots of little gaps and nooks and crannies where mini bees can hide, but I've not quite finished yet. I've put my pieces of wood and pot on the top to try and keep some of the rain out. And there are all different spaces now where different mini bees can move in and make their home here. So I hope that you'll have a go at making your book hotel. It doesn't have to be like mine. There are lots of ideas on the internet for different ones you can make. So have a go and send us some pictures of them. Why don't you go on a mini beast hunt or make a book hotel or do the quiz? Send us photos and then we can put them on the learning gallery.